Uh, I just want to say uh, mental health impacts children's readiness to learn. Uh, just as surely as having the rights for textbooks, up-to-date technology, or school meals. That's why this legislation aims at sharpening the expertise of educators across New York State. This mental health first aid bill will contribute to our educators' uh, ability to promote wellness. Ed educators will be able to uh, better access risk. Educators will be able to access risk and make that, that critical first link towards health. This measure will help strengthen the infrastructure of mental health care in our communities. And I am proud to be joined by so many colleagues and advocates concerned about education, mental health, and promoting the well-being of youth in our state. It has become imperative that New York moves quickly um, to help our youth cope with the increasing stresses they face in daily life. Training school staff to better identify and find resources for face facing the, our youth. Mental issues is an initiative which is long overdue. With over 200,000 New York children and teens having a mental health diagnosis and another 20% of our youth suffering from mental disorders that impair their daily lives. Schools need to understand that implementation of mental health first aid is a benefit for the student and for the classroom. And in many cases, uh, mental health first aid can be the difference between life and death as, as teen suicides and suicide attempts are on the rise. So I just want to also uh, thank Assemblyman Crespo, who was uh, introducing this bill in the Assembly, uh, which is uh, well needed. As the, uh, uh, the chair of the Assembly uh, Puerto Rican uh, Task Force, I'm going to let him speak next. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, and, and to all of our colleagues who are here for the leadership shown on, on an issue that, you know, nationally is being talked about. Um, and, and certainly in New York State, we've had our battles and have seen and continue to see day to day in the media and the press what's happening to our young people. Um, not getting the treatment they need, not getting the attention they need, signs that, are, that would seem clear after the fact were overlooked uh, prior to incidents happening. Um, and, and I know Senator mentioned suicide rates amongst our kids, but when you look at the numbers of suicides among uh, Latinas, young Latina women, uh, the numbers are staggering. 23% of Latina teenagers have contemplated suicide. Um, and those numbers are, are, in my opinion, a crisis situation. So what we're asking for is very simple. We want our partners in education um, to get the training necessary, the understanding, uh, to be able to identify those signs and make sure uh, that they can reach out to those that can service uh, those children in due time to prevent these problems, to ensure that, you know, they realize that there is help and that there is hope. And so this is, I think, a common sense bill. Um, I think it's something long overdue. I think that we cannot continue to simply say we want to see a change in the dynamics and the crime that in the, and the issues that are affecting our young people without taking concrete steps uh, to provide the resources and the, and the advocacy and the acknowledgement of a problem early on. And that's what this does. Um, it's a cost-effective approach, and it just ensures that we have more educators and partners identifying problems and making sure that our kids get the help that they need. Uh, so I commend, once again, Senator Hamilton, and, and, and I, and I want to thank him and, and all the partners who are here for fighting uh, for an issue that uh, really is not only a New York State issue. It's not just a Latino issue. Um, it's all of our children across the board that need this, and so the time to act is now, and I hope that uh, legislative leaders uh, will prioritize this bill this session. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like also to join in uh, thanking the senator for uh, bringing this important bill uh, forward. Uh, one of the things that I also would like to say, all the friends that I have behind me, I used to uh, be the chair of the Mental Health Committee uh, about four years ago. And I... Uh, one, one of the things that uh, when I was the chair, and I went, when I became chair of any committee, I take, I take the chairmanship very seriously. Uh, and I do believe that the, uh, the needs of uh, mental health issues uh, hasn't been addressed properly, hasn't been addressed with the seriousness that they really deserve. Uh, every five seconds is a child that is walking to school every morning thinking about how I can kill myself. You think about that for a second. Every five seconds, a child is thinking about, 
how to commit suicide, how to kill them, her, her himself. And this is students in our school system. And we cannot, we cannot continue to see this trend. And we cannot continue to see the trend of the stigma that get put to some of these kids when they go to see the mental health provider, when they go to see the psychology or the psychiatry. So it's a serious stigma that when this kid walk into a room, they get intimidated and afraid to get the treatment that they need and the help that they need because of the bully situation that takes place among their classmates. So I know we need more education. I know we need more awareness. But at the same token, I have introduced two pieces of legislation where I do believe it's essential that from pre-K kindergarten through high school, which you have a mandate, social worker, mental health provider, social worker, as well as a, as, as a psychology in every school. And they should be separate. You know, when you go to a school, like I do every Friday, I go to my schools, first thing I do I go is to go to talk to the psychology. And the psychology is not a psychology, it's a guidance counselor. So the guidance counselor is playing the role of the psychology and the social worker. And the teachers sometimes play the role of everybody, plus my grandmother, my grandfather, but <laughs> everybody else. That's right. So to finalize, I would like to say that I will be co-sponsoring this bill. I will be continue to speak loud and clear about this bill. And I will continue to address why it's so impor important that we really go and take care of our children and detect them early enough that not only will be able to get the child, but that we will be able to get the family inside the room to also be taken care because the nature of that child attitude or behavior sometimes has to do with what he see or she see in the household, but also what happened with the parents that the parents might continue to add when they was 12, 11 years old, we now don't know anything. So therefore, I commend the senator, I commend the assemblyman for sponsor the bill, I will be co-sponsoring co the bill as well, and let's continue to speak about it. Let's continue to talk about this issue. Let's continue to make sure that our children don't, don't get continue to be used as a political pit ball, but to be used to be used to do the right thing for them and their family and not to wait for them to get into the jail system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman Felix Ortiz. Next we have State Senator Leroy Carmen. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good I'm, morning. I'm pleased to be here to support and I intend to co-sponsor this bill. Um, and I want to thank uh, Senator Hamilton and Assemblyman Crespo and uh, Assemblyman Ortiz and, Ron, and Assemblyman Ron Kim uh, for already agreeing to be co-sponsored of this, of this bill as well. Uh, the mental health first aid curriculum is uh, aimed at identifying student behavioral problems and tackling them head on as opposed to letting them linger and allowing students to be labeled as problems and therefore get lost in an educational system that has so many moving parts that oftentimes don't talk to each other. Um, it, it, clearly, this is a resource issue. Many districts don't have enough resources. Assemblyman Ortiz just eloquently spoke about the fact that we need to have a real psychologist in every class, in every building, in every school. Uh, we need to make sure that the teachers are, are able to identify and refer these students early on so that they don't create problems and disrupt classrooms for an entire semester because that uh, creates a disruption that truly hurts our educational system. And we need to ensure that all of, uh, these, all of the teachers and all of the um, guidance counselors, and especially school psychologists, are well trained to identify these things. But we also need to make sure that they are not um, being punished for what they're doing also in the system. Because oftentimes, they're trying to control a classroom or move a school um, and they get punished in the test scores because these children are, um, are disrupting an entire classroom and that's not being recognized also. So I'm impressed with uh, what Senator Hamilton is doing. I understand there's some tinkering to be done so that we can ensure that no one is hurt while this bill is being passed also, but I intend to work with all parties to make sure that the language is correct 
so that there's no one that's confused about what our obligation is here, which is to help people that are hurting uh, so that they can be helped by the system and not that the system is continually victimized by the fact that they're disrupting classrooms and that also the individuals themselves are assisted so that they're not caught in a spiral of failure forever. So I want to thank all of the assembly people and especially Senator Hamilton. I'm sorry I can't stay, but I'm supposed to be in three places at the same time. So. <laughs> and, but thank you, Senator Hamilton and Senator Crespo, for sponsoring this bill. Have a good morning. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Senator Comrie. Our next speaker will be uh, Ron Kim. Somebody, Ron Kim. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Hamilton and Assemblyman Marcos Crespo for putting this forward. Uh, in my first year uh, when I was in office, one of my um, supporters, uh, a constituent, his uh, daughter had um, committed suicide. and, and you know, he, she uh, was suffering from depression and, and, and was going through a lot in the community. And instead of addressing uh, the issue and the problem with the right professionals, uh, she was told to go see her pastor and, and work it out with the church for a number of years. And, and I bring this story up because I represent an immigrant community. Um, and I think Mark goes up, thoroughly understands that uh, sometimes mental health, mental related health, mental issues um, uh, is often a stigma that isn't treated as an illness. It's not identified, it's not addressed properly. Um, and as a chair of uh, the New American Task Force, this is something that I deeply care about in making sure that um, our children uh, receive the proper services when they're suffering from uh, depression and mental illness. And this is also something that I focused on for many years. Um, you know, I'm a Korean American immigrant and uh, you know, the statistics show that in actually my, my homeland in South Korea, there's the most number of high school students and college students who commit suicide in the entire world, mm -hmm. in the entire world. And I think um, it's, it's a community that um, really rejects the notion of mental illness because of, I think, many psychologists uh, view as, as a fixed-minded way of looking at the world where, where it's not... Um, Instead of, instead of addressing it, instead of viewing the world with the growth mindset, it's a very fixed-minded uh, looking of looking at the world. And that's something that um, I think as a community we need to come together and address, not only for immigrant and Asian American communities, but for the entire uh, community, especially, especially because for the last 15 years, as we know, our school system, education system, have done whatever we can to teach to the test Right? And, and the federal government has thrown whatever dollars they can. Where each classroom has turned into, into a prep school center instead of kids actually learning with purpose and passion and collaborating. So that adds to the depression. And the teachers now, we need to, they need to be able to identify symptoms so they can move forward in the right direction. And having said that, we also need to work with our partners. With, our, with, our, with, with the labor groups and, and people and make sure that this is fully funded. I think that's something that, that we need to address moving forward. So with that, thank you so much for all the members and our and Marcos Crespos and Hamilton for putting this forward. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Assemblyman Kim. I, I just want to say, Assemblyman Crespo, when I, we first talked about it, he said, I'm on board, brother. And when we're hearing all the statistics, uh, Latino women, uh, Korean uh, students with the stress uh, of school, and we're, and we're here to help teachers. Uh, this is to make sure that, that the teachers have the tools that they need in order to teach our children. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's a collective, it's, it's a village raising our children. So that's why I want our next speaker, who is a young lady, uh, to say hello to us. And her name is uh, Tiana Springer, before I bring the, huh? Tiara. Tiara, okay, okay, Tiara. <laughs> So good morning, everybody. Um, like you said, my name is Tiara Springer Love, and I'm a youth advocate coordinator for Families on the Move. And I work inside of inpatient and outpatient psychiatric facilities in New York City. So we have um, we partner with um, the Office of Mental Health, and we provide peer-to-peer -peer support and advocacy for youth and families who are experiencing. Um, 
crises. And I definitely support this bill. I took the training, and it's like um, Senator Comrie said, it's a it's a common sense training. But when everything is going on in the classroom, teachers aren't thinking about common sense. It's about how can I get these kids to learn. And um, a lot of the times, a lot of kids experience, as they're going through crisis, teachers are trying to fix the crisis, yet kids aren't able to maintain their dignity. One thing about stigma is that it comes from a place of not knowing. And if teachers are equipped with the proper tools to assist kids in knowing what's going on, because a lot of the issues stem outside of school. And if, um, I'm so sorry, because I'm nervous. Um, um, growing up as a youth in New York City with home problems and um, receiving mental health services, including the stigma that was in my house, like going through stigma at home but wanting to do better, it was hard. So having teachers that understood what I was going through, some of my teachers knew what I was going through, many of them didn't, but having those teachers who were patient with me, those teachers who understood, those teachers who tried to understand even though they couldn't, did a lot for me. Just that one question of what's going on, how can I help you? That's pretty much what this training teaches. It also teaches about trauma, understanding trauma. And as I work in the inpatient and outpatient psychiatric facilities, none of these teachers are trained on how to work with these kids. And it's, it's terrible. How am I supposed to get an education with a teacher who doesn't even understand my diagnosis? I might be impulsive jumping off the walls. Maybe I just took a medication that makes me go to sleep. And you don't understand that. You just think I'm being a defiant kid. And that's really, Teachers don't understand that because they aren't trained. And I think that this is a wonderful first step in getting teachers trained in how to work with these kids appropriately. And one thing as a teacher, you want to feel fulfilled. You want to know that your kids are able to learn. You want to know that your children are going home knowing something better and they feel more comfortable asking a question instead of being embarrassed. Um, and one thing about this bill is that I feel that with this being passed, that that's something that will happen. Teachers will feel more comfortable, students will even feel more comfortable, and peers of the students will feel more comfortable speaking to each other about what's going on. So um, I support the bill, and um, I hope you guys support it as well. Thank you. Thank you.